guys, welcome back. Fred here, AF Math and Engineering, and we are finishing up this shear center question. So what have we done so far? Go back to the last two videos if you haven't, and just familiarize yourself with the concept. This is a fairly basic question in terms of shear center. And we drew the shear flow diagram, okay, which is essentially the direction that the shear flow is moving. We labeled the forces created by that shear flow and this external shear force of 200 kilonewtons. We found the moment of inertia, we found the stresses, and we found the forces, and they're here. And that was the last step that we looked at. And now we are going to solve for the shear center itself, which is E. Okay, E is the distance to the shear center, okay, essentially. And how we're going to do that is we're going to take the moments that are created by these couple moments, okay? And in doing so, we are going to equal them to zero. Because if you remember in the first question, the shear center is the point in an unsymmetrical beam where we can load and have no twisting, okay? So by that definition, the moment or the summation of the moments should equal zero. All right, so I have written those forces down on this page so we can work here while looking at the diagram. And let's begin. So if you remember from physics one or two, the couple moment can be calculated by multiplying the value of the force by the distance connecting the arms, okay? So let's start with F1 in section B. So we have, and we're going to write the moments about point O, okay? Or the summation of moment, the moment about O, we're gonna say that this is our positive direction, is equal to zero, okay? And I just explained why that's the case. All right, so keep that in mind. So let's say that the mo summation of the moment around zero, and let's write this out now. We have one. 11,535.125 newtons, okay? And we're gonna multiply that by the distance between the F1s, which is gonna be 100 millimeters, okay? And if we take a look, this is rotating in a positive direction, okay? That we, a counterclockwise positive direction that we assumed when we started. You can assume any direction, that's fine. Just make sure you follow your assumption throughout the whole question. Okay, so next we have a negative moment acting in the other direction. Okay, so we're gonna start that off with a negative and F2 is 23,070.25 and the distance between these two is 50 millimeters, okay? Now, we have to take into consideration, and this is how we're gonna solve for our shear force, is we're going to, or sorry, our, our shear center, is we are going to solve for E here, okay? And there is some distance separating E or the 200 kilonewton shear force acting downwards from the cross section, okay? And that's what we're going to solve. E is our unknown here, okay? And that is acting also in a positive direction, okay? So we have 200 kilonewtons, so we're gonna multiply by 10 to the three to change that into newtons, and we're going to multiply by E, okay? Where E is the distance here, as I just explained. This is all equal to zero, okay? Now, all we have to do now is solve for E. Now, if we compute this here, we'll see that we get a very, very, very small number depending on how you rounded. Actually, when I rounded here, I ended up getting zero. But if I were to carry more decimals out, I would get something very, very, very small, possibly something like that, okay? Divided by 200 times 10 to the three, okay? And we are going to get a very small number, okay? So, as a result of that, we can say that the shear center is roughly zero, okay? Or the, the value of E is roughly zero, okay? So the shear is being applied essentially at the origin right here, okay? So that means that the distance from the origin to where the shear force is being applied is essentially zero and it's being applied pretty much directly on the origin at the center of the cross section. That's what this value means here, okay? So, you know, a little bit of a tricky concept to really understand. Um, the most important part about this is that you understand how to get the right numbers, understand the process, and make sure you get it right on the exam. And that's pretty much it, guys. Thanks for watching. Give us a like, give us a subscribe if you're enjoying our videos so far. Come back for more. Thanks for watching.